what will be the classification and what will you will have to know about 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 the associated injuries which is associated with this particular injury having having gone through having gone through this and uh, what will be your probable diagnosis all of you i hope by now you would have you would have known that it is it is a post classical attitude of a posterior dislocation of the hip joint i talked about investigations and what is the investigation it is a simple plain a plain radiological feature of a pelvis x ray of both hips will give you a definitive diagnosis in this particular case and uh, number 3 how do you classify we will go into the details of that whole classification means to classify as anterior posterior and and the central dislocation which is no more valid it is only posterior and anterior dislocation and finally how do you sub classify this posterior dislocation is important and what are the classification the classical classification described as all of you know is thomson abston classification that's the type one is without minor fracture that may be a minor fracture or without and number 2 is type 2 with a with a with a with a classical large chunk of the posterior wall and number 3 is the comminuted fracture which which because the difference will be how you really manage it that is important and type 4 is dislocation with fracture of the acetabulum per se and type 5 with a fracture of the head of the femur as all of you know it is called the pipkin's fracture <laughs> well what are the what are the what are the other injuries associated when a patient comes to you with a, a very often we you are likely to miss it if you do not know what are the associated injuries the classical associated because it is a dashboard injury where the impact is directly on the knee joint in a flexion and 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 an adduction attitude of the of the limb there will be ligamentous injury almost 30% associated usually it can be an acl or if there is a valgus strain that can be that can be a mcl injury or a combination of injury with or without fractures and 20 to 25% of these can have sciatic nerve injuries and as much as it is varies though it is written as 40% there it varies in different series femoral head fractures varies from 20 to 40% and associated posterior wall acetabular fracture will be as much as 60% it depends on how your attitude of the limb was and and it depends on how the impact was to shatter the your bone of the fracture that is the number one thing now we go to question number 2 what about this it is like it is simple as such you you keep it in your mind what is your diagnosis so that you you cultivate that habit immediately you see what it is and there may be four reduction maneuvers so once you are diagnosed it, what are the reduction maneuvers and what are if at all you are not able to reduce it and what are the causes of irreversibility and finally what are the complications that are likely to ensue immediate and late and coming to that the diagnosis all of you know it is a classical posterior dislocation of the hip joint as you see there the head is up whenever the head is up from the acetabulum the empty acetabulum it is up it is always posterior dislocation when it is related to the to the to the obturator foramen or medial it is anterior dislocation and uh, coming to the reduction maneuvers the classical reduction which which all the books have described either to is the classical which alice method where you simply put the patient supine 90 degrees of flexion and just you will be the with an assistant pushing the pushing the pushing the pelvis down you just pull it up and rotate it and slowly accelerate rotate it and abduct then you you hear a classical click i won't go into the bigelows was historically that you know the if there is if there is a if there is if there is, if there is a possibility you are not able to reduce that means there is a rent in the capsule or or in the short muscles of the of the of the hip and uh, east baltimore lift today you can go and refer each each one has described these are all these are all theoretical facts which which are to be written but the classical simpson method is where where you do not give an anesthesia in elderly patients you put the patient prone and allow the limb to hang and slowly you get a push up and push on the on the knee joint flex knee joint it gets reduced 
the PGI technique is a different technique and the pygmy technique is to adduct and go, goes on to the opposite shoulder and reduce it. And what is important is after reduction, both the limbs will have to be neutral and it has to be of the same length. There is no deformity, the patient will be at ease and you hear mostly you hear a classical click. Suppose many times we, we come across this possibility that, uh, that, that you can't reduce the dislocation. Then what are the causes of not being able to reduce? You should understand, you, you should not use blunt force. If you use blunt force, however, well, that you ask your anesthetist to relax him, relax him well. And if you are not able to, you shall not, I repeat, you shall not use blunt force. If you use blood force, there is a possibility that you may fracture the neck of the femur or cause, cause a sciatic nerve injury as such because of your force which you are unnecessarily using. So the second cause, as I told you, is a buttonhole through the capsule, which has buttonhole, just a capsule which has come out and it is not trying to get in. That's why the visual method was to see you circumduct and there is a possibility that it gets into the buttonhole and gets back to the acetabulum. Then the full third cause is buttonhole through the short XL rotator. They are strong muscles. It requires very, very strong force to really buttonhole the, 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 any of one of those four muscles. But it can happen. It has been reported. And the last, which is many times missed and which is not understood, even in an X-ray, is the labral tear with an inverted labrum. So here it is very difficult to understand. Even if you had a properly, only a properly done MRI, can really give you a definitive indication that there is a liberal tear which is inverted, which does not allow the head of the femur to come back into position. Are you all right with my speed? Are you all right with your this thing? I hope you are fine. Otherwise, you will have to tell me. It is going phenomenal, sir. Ah, good. Fine. And now you come to come to the complications. What are the complications of when the head, head is at, does it depend on the time lag? Or does it depend on the type of injury? Does it depend on the severity of the injury? And uh, the complications are, late complications, as you know, is AVN, which is well known, which can occur in as much as depending on the injury, 20 to 30 percent of these cases can go into AVN. And uh, hydrogenic, which you and, you and me can cause, as I told you, when you are trying to reduce with force, it can cause uh, the, uh, the fracture of the neck of the femur, even, even when you play with full relaxation. And that is as far as that. Now you come to this particular picture, question number three. And uh, here is a classical picture. You diagnose, you have a chance for uh, the 30 seconds. So it is, it is an undergraduate, undergraduate X-ray to be put in. As I told you, when the head is related to the obturator parameter, when, the, when it is related to the pubic rema, then it is an anterior dislocation of the hip joint. Very rarely a laxatio erecta has a type a type has been de described where where the limb is limb is really in hyperabducted position. Otherwise, here the classical the clinical picture is flexion, abduction, and an external rotation. This is as you depreciate, you would depreciate the lesser trochanter, which is which is very prominent here, the greater trochanter is less prominent, and that is a classical anterior dislocation. How do you classify this injury as it is? Anterior dislocation of the hip as such is the absence classification again with the superior, as I told you, which can, which can go right up there, which is which is rather rare, and which, which is going to the pubic and the iliac type, which is rather rare. Mostly it is classically related to the obturator foramen and the pubic rema, which is much more. What I was telling about laxatio erecta is, is an exaggerated form. Of, of, of the pubic type where, where it is almost down below the uh, cotyloid and that is in a different attitude altogether. So you will have to see whether there is any associated fracture and associated fracture of the femoral head both in posterior dislocation of the hip and anterior dislocation always looking to whether there is a concentric head of the femur or not. Uh, otherwise, there is a likelihood that you are missing a head of the head of the femur fracture, and the head of the, the and also associated fracture of the acetabulum. And uh, one of the one of the complications which have been which have been described is very rare, but it can occur because of its proximity to the femoral artery that it cannot tear. Mostly, it cannot tear, but it can impinge, 
it can put a pressure that can be an intimate intimate tear of the vessel which results which results in later occlusion so it is imperative you put your hand on the dorsalis speed is the posterior tibial artery even then if it is there it can occur it can occur late that you will have to always look into and if there is a doubt you will you will have to do act, do the particular investigation to do it now Another question. Now we go to question number four. We are we are going on on the correct time. What is your diagnosis here? You think of the diagnosis. See the, the classical. We have described the anterior dislocation. We have described the posterior dislocation. We classified the posterior dislocation as such. And what is what is this? The classical diagnosis as such. What you see here, it is very 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 typically you see there that. that that is what i was telling whether it is anterior or posterior you cannot miss this particular fact there so that is a classical fracture head of the femur associated with the posterior dislocation so what is your classification system and what is the treatment protocol and if this is the one as it here you think yourself what is what is your classification and how do you proceed there are various classifications which have come into vogue on the books and either two we used to follow the pipkins fracture dislocation classification which is as type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 and type 5 depending on where where the fracture fragment is displaced whether it is intrafoveolar supraoveolar or whether whether it is associated with a fracture neck of the femur or or whether it is associated with 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 the acetabular fracture and this is The other two classifications which have come into vogue recently, vogue uh, recently, are the Brombeck classification, which is more comprehensive, which is more understanding. By the fact, Pipkins never mentioned about 